Angkor Wat is a must-see if you're travelling to Cambodia, but it gets ridiculously busy. We would do things very differently next time. So to help you get the most out of your trip, here's what no one tells you about visiting Angkor Wat. It's super early. It's 4 a.m. right now. And the reason we're up so early is because we are gonna go see the sunrise at Angkor Wat. So we're gonna go downstairs, jump in our tuk-tuk, and show you our journey and show you the sunrise when we get there. It's the middle of the night, you can barely see anything. <laughs> Sunrise isn't all it's cracked up to be. So we went to watch the sunrise and it was quite nice, but I thought it was a little bit overrated, to be honest. And that is because there were a lot of people here, which is fine, but when you have to wake up super early and it's dark and you don't know where you're going, we didn't have a guide. So we just tried to find a spot so we could see Angkor Wat and see the sunrise. Um, we definitely didn't pick the best spot because it's pitch black and you can't see anything so you don't know where you're going. If you are coming at sunrise, bring a torch. So I think if you want to take some photos or videos, um, it's probably better to go at sunset because A, you don't have to wake up super early and B, um, you can actually see where you are to set up your camera <laughs> because where we set it up there were so many people in front of it and it just didn't turn out as well as I expected or wanted it to. It might be the busiest place in Cambodia. Personally, I want to find somewhere that like, is completely undiscovered by tourists and there's nobody here and you get this beautiful experience, but not many of those places exist because if they were that good, there'd be loads of people there. There's too many people. It's like a theme park or it reminded me of being at a festival with no bands. Yeah, at like, but it's like 4.30 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, and it's yeah. just absolutely packed. Vendors can be quite pushy. You're in the middle of a field, there's people like trying to sell you merchandise with Anchor Watt t-shirts and that give you tours and there's drink stands and there might as well be burger vans, like I don't think there was. It's cool, it's nice, but personally I preferred a lot of the Thai temples to Anchor Wat, which is probably controversial, but it's the truth. You don't know where the sun's gonna be unless you do your research. If you are going at sunrise, have a look at other pictures, figure out where you want to be, do your research or get a guide because they'll show you the best shots and then go. If you're going at sunrise you don't have a guide and you want to get a really good shot, you're going to struggle. Good blessing. I feel very blessed with the amount of water. <laughs> There's a lot of stairs and it's going to be a little bit tough if you're not fit. This is incredibly steep. The temple complex is big, really big. We have lost our tuk-tuk driver. <laughs> so he is not outside the entrance that we have just walked out of. So we are gonna have to walk around the whole thing to try and find him. And it's quite a big place. <laughs> it's very old and very impressive for the time. Mm. Um, and they've kept it in pretty good condition, but it's not as typically beautiful as some of the other temples we've seen 
purely because they're newer and a bit more fancy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. More ornate. It's mm. it sort of reminds me of like a castle in the depths of Wales. It's very expensive compared to almost everything else in Cambodia. Because in Thailand, I mean, you go to Wat Po and Wat Arun, and these temples cost like a pound. So it's super. So it's like what two, two, three dollars or something. It's so cheap and. To go to Angkor Wat, it costs thirty-seven dollars, so it's quite quite a jump. It, it is super expensive, to be honest. Going into the, even where you buy the tickets, it's like King's Cross Station or or a, you know a huge airport or something. It's nuts. You sort of feel like it's it's a bit of a victim of its own success, mm. and they're sort of taking advantage of it a little bit with the cost, which I don't really blame them because I feel like Angkor Wat might be might account for about 80% of CM Rip's economy. We are going to attempt to find our tuk-tuk driver and make it to our next temple. just finished looking or exploring Bayon Temple. I thought it was actually pretty trippy to be honest, like these massive stone faces um, carved into the kind of temple walls, so that was pretty cool. Um, it's something really unique I think, I've never seen anything like that before, so I thought that was pretty good and I think it's worth checking out. It is possible to see too many temples. We got our tuk-tuk driver and we could go on like three more tours of temples. We've already been going like seven hours, so I'm really tired and sweaty and it's starting to get pretty hot. So we're gonna go home, have a shower, probably take a nap before we go out this evening. 